Without the anointing, you live an ordinary life. You become ordinary. You remember Samson? The Bible tells us about Samson. He was a great man of God. You read that in the book of Judges. And every so often, the anointing of God will come upon him. And he will have this supernatural, extraordinary strength. And he'll do mighty things. Until one day, he gave out his secret. And uh, uh, his anointing was... The symbol of his anointing was in his hair. And so, when he was misbehaving and not living right, and this lady called Delilah got some money from others and came to him after trying several times, of course. And finally, she, he told her where his strength was and said, it's in my hair. I've never had my hair cut. He was a Nazarite. So he had to have his hair uh, as natural, never cut. So this time, he was sleeping and Delilah called these Philistines to come. And they came in there and cut his hair. And the Bible tells us, Samson got up when she cried. Samson, the Philistines are here. And he got up and shook himself as at other times. Now, every time he shook himself, the anointing came on him. He knew exactly what to do. When he shook himself, the anointing came. And he shook himself as at other times. And the Bible says, he didn't know that the Spirit of God had departed from him. So he shook himself, nothing happened. He was ordinary and they got him and took him away. See, there was a big difference. Shaking yourself as a lot of times didn't change anything because the difference was the Holy Spirit who was now gone. How could you live without him? See, a Christian He's not an ordinary person. To live an ordinary life is unacceptable. You must live in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every day. Every day. Every day. Not sometimes in the day. Every day. Throughout the day. You may not feel the anointing. Throughout the day. But you'll be conscious of the Holy Spirit. That because he lives in you. There's someone who lives with you. You understand? He's there inside you. He talks to you. That's why he tells us about the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. There's a fellowship. There's a communion. A continual communication with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Say, I'll never be ordinary. I'll never be ordinary because I'm supernatural. I'm born of God. I have the nature of God. Yeah, you have the nature of God. The fire of God has been set inside you. Let it burn. Hallelujah. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Oh, let it burn. Let the fire of the Spirit in your life burn. Refuse to be ordinary. Refuse to be substandard. Refuse to be general. I'm not a general guy, you know? So no, I'm not a general guy. I'm not average. And you know, one day anointing is on your life. Your vision expands. You start seeing things beyond you. I told you yesterday, you can't just be concerned about you and your little family. No, once you receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life, He enlarges your vision. He enlarges your vision. The city becomes small to you. The country becomes small to you. The world becomes small to you. Imagine if you are on now, 
doing what God is asking you to do, what do you think will happen in five years' time? You would have had five years of practice. Five years of growing. So in five years' time, you'll be far more excellent. But if you don't do anything now and wait until five years' time, you'll be a starter, a beginner, five years' time. One of the advantages that I have is that I started early. I started early. No waste of time. I started early. I started early. So I, I, I've put in years of practice walking with God. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. So you can walk with God. You walk with God. So if you start now, in five years time, you'd have had another five years of walking with God. Ten years of walking with God is important. It matters because it trains you. See, the Holy Spirit trains you. And if you, if you yield yourself to Him now, then you're in for the training. You're in for the training. I mean, you, you, you shouldn't, at the age of 40, be making mistakes that you should have made when you were 15. You understand what I mean? I mean, you should have made all your mistakes earlier. It's not acceptable that at a certain age of your life, you're making blunders. Make your mistakes now. By practicing now. By doing God's word now. And then be corrected and guided. And perfect your way in Christ. That's the way. Seek opportunities to express what God has put inside you. Seek opportunities. Be involved in the church. Be involved. Seek to be involved. Don't wait until someone calls you. Seek to be involved. You can start something if it doesn't exist in the church. If the opportunity doesn't exist, start it. Don't just stay there. Don't let the fire that God has set up in you quench. The Bible says quench not the spirit. You've got to encourage the work of God in your life. Don't just go back and, and, and slip away and just let it go. Like you never heard. Like you never got the inspiration. The Bible says quench not the spirit because it is possible to quench the spirit. Let your fire burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. And God will tell you what to do. Sometimes he may stir you up and say, do a musical outreach. Possibly. It could be a musical outreach. And of course, a lot of times the church facilities are there and they're not being used. They use them on Sunday and then maybe on Wednesday and then some special meetings. So it's free for you. It's free for you. So you start out with the church and then take it out and then have the big ones. You started out just like that. If you pray, the Spirit of God will open your mind. Will open your mind. When we first came to start out our work in South Africa here, you know what I did? I asked for an auditorium, sitting just 6,000. The Standard Bank, uh, called it Standard Bank Arena, small auditorium. I just started work here in South Africa. And our TV programs just started. And we'd been working for about a year plus. So I said, let's have this. Because as I prayed, the Spirit of God was showing me visions. Okay? So we asked for five days and booked the auditorium. Day one, place was packed out. I said, if you walk with the Holy Ghost, He'd walk with you. Day one, it was packed out. Day two, packed out and the, 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 the tennis court had to be used as an overflow. Day three, tennis court was packed out. Day four, the police came because now people are climbing everywhere looking for how to get in. The miracles were happening everywhere. Inside, outside, there was no more space. The police had to beg me, please, 
cancel day five. Yeah, because if you go on, there's no place, no way for people to stay anymore. The place was only holding 6,000 and we just started. I had to come and announce that day five will not hold. Say, I was born for a reason. I'm going to change things. I was born for a purpose. I'm going to change things. We're going to take things to a, a higher level by the power of the Spirit of God. You see, this was the way I looked at it. Paul, Peter, James, Bartholomew, Matthew, the, the apostles of Jesus, they did a lot. Okay? And the church has done so much all the way until it got to us. How can we lose this thing? We must take it on. We must change our generation. We must. Our generation needs witnesses. Witnesses of the gospel. Those who are passionate for Jesus Christ. Full of love for Jesus Christ. And they are ready to stick their lives for Jesus Christ. Nothing less. Nothing less. Peter the apostle will not preach to your generation. Paul is not coming to preach to your generation. He preached to his generation. They all preach to their generation. Where is today's Paul? Where is today's Peter? You've, your generation has to have a voice. And that voice is you.